For those uninitiated, Webkins is a massively multiplayer virtual pet game. It's been around since 2005, and the gimmick used to be that when you bought a Webkins plush in stores, it would come with a code card, which you could use to make an account on the website and play with your pet in the online game. In 2013, they removed the plush requirement and allowed you to join for free. In 2019, they discontinued the plushes altogether, replacing them with the Gantz eStore, where you can just purchase the virtual pets directly. And then in 2020, they released a 3D reboot of Webkins called Webkins Next, and and renamed the old game to Webkin's Classic. Back when Webkin's Next first released, I made a video talking about the Webkin's franchise and how much I liked it, and then I talked about the reboot. If you haven't seen that video, click the thing in the top right corner to watch it now. My main criticism with Webkin's Next was that the game was very clearly unfinished when it released. They must have had a roadmap of what they wanted to do, and they just weren't as far along as they should have been. There were a bunch of placeholder areas you try to go, and the game would directly tell you, hey, don't worry about that, that's not done yet, but it's coming soon. I also criticized the art style, but I didn't have too many productive things to say so I didn't linger on it. I just said the characters are weird looking because they are. I was surprised at how shockingly barren the game was at launch. I would hardly ever see other players online when I was playing. My conclusion was I was happy they didn't shut down Webkin's Classic in favor of Next. As far as I know, they're still maintaining them as two separate games, one for the veterans and one for the new generation. They could have shut down Classic in favor of the new game that's probably easier to maintain, but they didn't do that. They went for the more difficult option to please the old school players and that was unquestionably the right move for them to make. Usually when I make a huge video about a specific topic like the Webkins one, I get super burnt out with the topic at hand. I haven't engaged with pretty much anything Webkins related since I released that video. So I wanna revisit Webkins next to see if three years of development time will have the game better aligning to Gantt's vision for how it's supposed to be experienced. So before we get to the revisiting, let's talk about the plushes for a moment. In 2020, they launched the next generation of Webkins plushes to go along with Webkins next. The initial drop were these two, the Golden Retriever and the Unicorn. I mentioned in the video that I didn't really like how they looked, but I didn't elaborate on why. People in the comments said that the Webkin's next plush designs are trying to play off of the popularity of Beanie Boos. I definitely understand that comparison. The flat, beady eyes are very similar. Beanie Boos are intentionally homogenous to appeal more to collectors. If you like one, then you'll like them all. But unfortunately, the same goes for the opposite. I don't really like any of them. I just realized this is the meme, the what plush companies think is cute versus what what's actually cute. My point is the Webkin's Next plushes leave much to be desired compared to the incredible variety and detail offered by the classic plushes. I demonstrated in my last video that they often went above and beyond when they didn't have to. What we're experiencing right now is Gantz playing it safe. I know they're capable of being much more experimental, but their bottom line has shifted since going free to play. For a very long time, the plushes had to be awesome because that's what got people into the game. But ever since they removed the plush requirement, they became more of an accessory than a gateway. The demographic of people that download a game on their iPad is much larger than the demographic of people that walk into a store and buy a plush to play a video game. With this new generation of Webkins, since they're only releasing two to five plushes per year, they want to make them as marketable as possible. And playing off of popular plush trends is a reasonable way to do it, I just don't personally like it as much. So back in 2020, I purchased the Webkins Next Golden Retriever, and it has remained in a box on a shelf for nearly three years. You might be asking, why did I buy a plush that I don't like? Part of the reason was because it's a major milestone. It's the first plush of the new generation. It's a first edition Webkin's Next catalog number one, and I thought that was kind of cool. The other half of my reasoning was uncharacteristically cynical for me, but I genuinely thought Webkin's Next was gonna shrivel up and die very soon after I released my video about it. I had a lot of reasons to believe that was the case. It was getting slam dunked in reviews, it was unfinished and buggy, and there were hardly any players on Online. MMOs are historically the most expensive video games to maintain, and Gantz does have a history of deleting games they've made. For example, Maze and Hamsters and Amazing World, two Gantz games that you can never play again because they pulled the plug on them. I was truly truly anticipating Webkin's Next would end up on the chopping block. I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they stuck it out. But what I'm saying is, if Webkin's Next had disappeared, I would have wanted something tangible to represent its existence. So I bought the Golden Retriever, and I'm really glad I did, because I think this thing is rare now. There are none for sale on eBay, and only one has ever been sold in the past for $75 
without the code. Because I don't really like the plush that much, I don't have to feel too bad about being a collector nerd and keeping this thing in the original box for as long as I can. Now that I can feel a little bit more confident that the game isn't going anywhere anytime soon, I do plan to purchase at least one virtual pet in Webkin's Next, since I'm not planning to use the code that was included with the plush I bought. So the first thing I did when I decided to revisit Webkin's Next was take a look at the reviews. I wanted to see if the Microsoft Store reviews were as bad as they used to be, and they are not. The reviews are generally much better, but they're not free from the occasional valid criticism. Complaints about how the graphics are unappealing, people that can't log in, people that bought items with real money and had them never show up in game. Even a lot of the five-star reviews are mentioning bugs and glitches, which is not a good sign. But overall, it has a 4.1 star average. Most of the reviews are happy with the game. Though I think the Microsoft Store reviews are weighted because they seem to be hiding old reviews. The oldest one I could find was from six months ago. So I looked on my iPad to see the Apple App Store reviews. The average is also pretty good at 4.3 stars. When sorted by most helpful, it is entirely mixed. Some people love it, some people hate it. But a lot of the common criticisms are about the graphical style, how the pets look uncanny, how the classic game is neglected in favor of next, and glitches, bugs, glitches. Oh boy. I don't plan to play the iPad version. Maybe it is buggier than other platforms. I don't know. I'm going to be playing the Microsoft Store version of the game on PC to make it easy to capture and write about. But I feel like iPad and iPhone users are the main demographic that Webkin's Next is aiming at. So I felt that looking at the App Store reviews specifically would glean some valuable context. Okay, enough with the preamble. It's time to actually look at the game. Let me clarify how this is going to work. When the video has a border like this, I'm doing a scripted voiceover. When the video is zoomed in like this, you're hearing my live reaction from when I was recording gameplay footage. Got it? All right, cool. So let's get into it. First off, I made a new account so I could see if they added any polish to the introductory process. It's paced a little bit better, but it's still pretty much the same. If anything, it's more rough around the edges than it was before, sadly. Miss Biscuits is as stiff and robotic as always. Instead of the three pets to choose from, now you have five. <laughs> I don't want any of them. I... I I hate all of them. The frog doesn't animate at all, and I thought it was funny, so I picked them. Let's give your pet a name. Human teeth. Ribitulon. Just move the wheels until you find a name you like. Why doesn't she move at all? She's only moving her mouth. Powder sugar skip sounds like something that would be in like a cooking mama speed run. On the deed screen, instead of world name, username, password, it erroneously says world name, password, password. Also, it displays your entire password in plain text and saves it to a PNG file on your computer without your permission. Please save this to your device. Why does it show my password? No, don't save that. No, don't put that on my computer. People are gonna hack my account. So if you share a computer with someone that plays Webkin's Next, you now know where to find their account details. My pet kept calling me missing nickname, which was funny. And then my welcome gift box played a sound effect only in one ear. Ah, yes, only in my right ear. Of all of the parts of the game that you would want to polish, it would be the onboarding process, especially for an MMO that you're expected to play long term. It's frustrating to see that Webkin's Next is greeting new players with ugly character designs, uncanny animations, and glitches. I can't say it makes for an amazing first impression, but it seems like it was plenty good enough of an impression for plenty of people because every time I go to Kinsville, I see a dedicated group of maybe 15 to 30 players sitting around and trading with each other. That's always a nice sight to see. Then I went to the adoption center to purchase a new pet like I promised I would. I really liked this bunny that's currently on offer. They're one of the few pet designs I actually like, so I took the special offer for $12 to get a new pet. I took my crate home and found that the bunny was not one of the available choices. I would have loved that bunny I saw earlier, but that is not an option. So I settled for the gingerbread puppy instead. Um, what is their name? Brown smile. Then I went to the adoption center to use my spark token, which I got with the special offer. Sparking is basically the Webkin's breeding system. You put two pets into the sparking machine, and then it creates a baby using random attributes from both pets. And I can totally see how people would get hooked on it. Please be a Shrek dog. No way. What's wrong with his mouth? Shrek the third. The worst Shrek movie. <laughs> After putting many hours into the game over a period of several days, I can pretty reasonably organize all of my feelings about Webkin's Next into three categories. Number one, the controls are horrible and confusing. I struggle so much with the controls in this game. It seems to be missing features that are so basic, like controlling my pet using the keyboard or being able to freely move the camera. I really wanted to just be like, hold middle mouse down and drag it around, and that's how you move the camera. 
but it seems like that's not a thing I can do. I don't know if it's because this game is meant for touch devices and I'm playing on PC, or if it's because of the messy interface design, but I think the main problem is that they make no effort to guide you with the controls. Can I just have like a button that I can click to show me the controls of the video game? Because I don't know what does what. I appreciate them taking a more hands-off approach when it comes to teaching the player how to play. I firmly believe that no tutorial is better than a bad tutorial. If the game is designed well and has good conveyance, the player can usually figure it out on their own, but this game is not designed well and I can't figure it out on my own. <laughs> so I looked for a UI guide or a controls menu and I couldn't find anything and the help button doesn't help. How do I use items? After you harvest the plant <laughs> 10 what? times. I tried Googling it. I tried looking on their website and their YouTube channel to no avail. Here's an excellent example of what I'm talking about. I opened the chat box and couldn't figure out how to close it to get back to my inventory. How do I make this go away? How do I make it go away? Uh, how do how do I make this go away? Uh, how do I? Get, this is in the way. Get out of the way. Get out of my way. So I figured out how to close the chat window. You click on the chair button. You click the chair button to make the chat go away. When I purchased a new pet at the adoption center, I couldn't figure out how to use the crate item it gave me right away. I tried double clicking on it. I tried dragging it onto my pet. I tried dragging it onto the floor, no dice. So I went home and my inventory changed sort without my influence to hide the items I just bought with real money. Didn't I just buy items? Where are they? Once I figured out how to change the sort back to find my pet crate, once again, I couldn't figure out how to use it. Can't drag and drop it, can't double click it. So I put it on the floor of my house. And then once I did that, Ribitulon walked into it and finally it opened and I could pick my pet. Then once I did that, it sent me back to the adoption center to give them a name. So I had to go to the adoption center and get a crate and then go home, put the crate on the floor and then be sent back to the adoption center. I feel like there is a very obvious way that this interaction could be optimized. Sometimes I can't tell if I'm fighting with the controls or the game is glitching. Like here, I was trying to go through a door in my house and I absolutely couldn't. Go in there. Go in there. Go, go in the door. Go in the door. Am I missing something here? Go in the door. No, not the, where's he going? Why won't the dog go into the door? Go into the door. I'm losing my mind. Does it have to like line up with another door or something? Do I have to have to move it over? I made another door. What? What are you talking about? Why do I, where do these doors keep coming from? There's like three doors now. I can't get rid of them. It makes for an incredibly frustrating gameplay experience when the cracks start to show, just for me playing the game normally. Which brings me to number two, Webkin's Next is held together with tape and prayers. The bugs would at best be really funny and at worst render the game completely unplayable. Oh no, wait, something's happening. <laughs> Help me, I'm stuck in here. What's happening? What, 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 what is happening to my doggy? My rough cut of Webkin's next footage shouldn't be a giant glitch compilation. It felt like every few minutes I was encountering some sort of glaring issue. Okay, that's definitely not supposed to be happening. That's very broken. Oh my, I think my game is soft locked. I got bellflowers. <laughs> so you're telling me I paid money to have no animations. I was animated before I was pushing the stroller and as soon as I got the stroller, I'm no longer animated anymore. At least the glitches were funny because otherwise most of the time I spent with the game, I was just very bored. We're here at the photo booth. Speaking of, number three. I keep running out of things to do. I've only been playing for a few days and I feel like I've already seen everything there is to see. Mining, the arcade, and school are basically the only activities in Webkin's Next, but there's no shortage of buildings with nothing in them. The cafe is a functionless empty room. The hair salon is a functionless empty room. The town hall is a placeholder from when the game first released. It has been under construction for three real life years. These buildings are just here to make the map feel more full, but it achieves the opposite. It makes the world 
it feel more hollow and superficial. So what is Gantz doing? The game is getting updates. What are they updating? Gantz is doing a similar thing for Next that I criticized them for doing with Classic. They're constantly adding more pets you can adopt and clothes you can wear in a game that's still buggy and rigid and ugly and unfinished. Is there anyone on earth that likes how this character is designed? I feel weird engaging with microtransaction content in a game that has the potential to softlock so spectacularly. Although that being said, the sparking concept is lightning in a bottle. It's unquestionably the highlight of the game and I would love to see it expanded upon, but I think they should find a way to make it more accessible. Your starter pet can only spark once and purchase pets can only spark three times. Once your sparks run out, that's it. The only way to spark more is to purchase a new virtual pet with real life money, though I'm pretty sure them hard limiting the amount of times a pet can spark is so you don't have a hundred identical looking babies running around. I think the immediate solution would be to implement a way for players to earn new pets without having to purchase them with real money. As for how they could expand on the idea, what if pets could evolve into new forms like Pokemon or two pets could fuse together. You couldn't do those concepts before because it would have created a dissonance between the plush and the virtual pet, but with the plushes being more of an accessory these days, I think it could work. Although who am I kidding? Gantz can't even fix the game they've currently got, let alone reinvent it three years in. They might as well make a new game. So let's answer the title question. Will Webkins ever be good again? I don't know. I mean, I hope so but it's not giving me a lot of reasons to believe that it will. Whether Gantz decides to fix Webkin's next or cut their losses and try something new is entirely up to them. But if they're just going to continue to turn Webkin's into a shell of its former self, then I'm not interested. Even if Webkin's next were finished and rock solid in its execution, I still don't think it was the right move for the franchise. Gantz felt like they had to craft Webkin's into yet another manipulative mobile game and water down their plushes to make them adequately predictable. If we go back to the root of everything, the reason I was so inspired by Webkins is because of their original plush designs. They're so vibrant and expressive and fun, and they represented a gateway to this wild toys to life MMO concept. It was such a unique idea that deserved to prosper, but we are not in an experimental age of media right now. Back in 2005, they were rewarded for standing out and going the extra mile, but that's not the world we're living in anymore. We're living in a world of Marvel movies and Funko Pops. Gantz isn't the problem here. They're just giving the people what they want. If anything, I'm the odd one out for wanting them to make Webkin's less homogenous. I understand why Gantz did what they did. They really wanted to develop some mainstream appeal for Webkin's but they're underestimating the power of cult appeal. I think instead of going for iPad kids, they should aim for adults. They're the ones that have all the money and all of the nostalgia. You will upset absolutely no one by doubling down on fan service for the cult community. Embrace the Y2K angle. It's super trendy right now. Embrace the old art style with the bright colors and early internet vibes. Relaunch old merch designs. Make figurines of all the classic characters people love. Do ugly Christmas sweaters with the old Webkins logo on it. In two years, we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of Webkins. It would be a golden opportunity for Gantz to launch a nostalgia campaign and give the fans what they really actually want because next ain't it. I'm sure there's a small percentage of people watching this video right now that play Webkins next every day. And to you, I get it. I'm nostalgic for Webkins too. That's why I'm here. But you don't have to settle with poor quality products just because it's an IP you like. If you want to play a game with a similar vibe, may I introduce you to Toontown Rewritten. It's got turn-based combat and a really fun progression system with cute characters, a fun aesthetic, lots of clothes and items to collect, and a virtual pet mini game if you choose to engage with it. Forget about Webkins. All my homies are logging into Toontown. Wow, look at that. They made it so that type chat is enabled by default and can be disabled. Hello. Garfield. <laughs> I am so silly. Did you see that? I love Garfield, the comics. <laughs> I love the comics. <laughs> Microphone. Uh, ominous. Uh, yeah. 
I have to pee. <laughs> it did a great job. Wait, what? You can say that? You can't say Garfield? 